What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the all new Orange Pi 3. Now this isn't going to be a review video. I do have to wait till better software is released till I can give you my final thoughts, but I can give you my initial impressions, the first benchmarks I ran in Android, and an overview of the board itself. So before we get started here, I do want to answer a couple questions that I know will be asked in the comments. No, this will not run RetroPie at this time, and as far as I can see, I don't think this board will ever run RetroPie. But there are other similar distributions out there, like Retro, Orange Pie, and Laka that could possibly come to this board in the near future. But knowing what the guys over at RetroPie have done in the past, I don't think it'll ever be officially available for the Orange Pie 3. As for pricing, there's a few variants available. The one I have here was $39.90 plus shipping from Ally Express. The lowest cost on the list will be $29.90. That comes with one gigabyte of LPDDR3 and no onboard storage. The Orange Pi boards have been around for a little while now. I actually own a few of them. I've only done a review on one or two, but I own about four of them. The other ones have just kind of been sitting because of performance issues. But taking a look at the product list, they've been pumping these things out. There is a lot of them available. On the software side of things for the Orange Pi 3, they do have the Linux source code and the Android source code, plus Android 7.0, Debian desktop, Debian server, Ubuntu desktop, and server. So they do have a few distributions to choose from right now. But personally, I hope the guys from Armbian get a hold of one of these quickly because they have a really fast turnaround time. I want to run Armbian on this and see what it can really do. I opted for the higher end model, so I do have 8GB of built-in eMMC storage and 2GB of LPDDR3 RAM. The specs we're getting here for the price are actually really decent. I mean, $30 to $40 depending on the options. But all of them do come preloaded with the all-winner H6 quad-core A53 CPU at 1.8GHz. This is a 64-bit CPU. But remember, if the operating system isn't 64-bit, you'll be stuck with 32-bit apps. 1 to 2 gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM. We also have gigabit Ethernet, 4 USB 3.0 ports, 1 USB 2.0 port, HDMI 2A, AC Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 5.0. And the GPU is the built-in Mali T720 MP2. So this is a dual-core GPU. This is actually the same GPU that comes in the Amazon Fire 8 HD. It will support OpenGL ES 3.1, 2.0, 1.1, and DirectX 11. There's also a 26-pin GPIO header, a built-in microphone, a built-in IR receiver. I mean, this thing is pretty loaded up, as you can see here. One trend I've been seeing with these single board computers is PCIe, be it through the GPIO or have its own dedicated slot. So this has a mini PCIe adapter. We could add external storage, external Wi-Fi, external Bluetooth. There's a plethora of things that we could plug into this and get it working as long as we could get the drivers up and running in Linux. There's also a micro SD card slot on the bottom. The all winner H6 CPU has actually been out for a while. It's in a lot of these cheaper Android TV boxes that you'll see on eBay and Amazon. I've done a review on one in the past and performance wasn't great, but I did want to test out Android here first because it's already established. I installed this heatsink along with a fan so we don't thermal throttle and lose performance that way. I'm also using a 2.5 amp 5 volt power supply using the barrel jack. So I'll be running their Android 7 software and as you can see something looks a little off. I'm uh, from America and I have no clue what's going on here but I do know that there is a language setting in Android. I just have to find it. I'm glad the icons don't change. It's one of these with a little globe beside it. Uh, I've had to do this in the past with a different single board computer. And everything looks completely different. So let me go ahead and get acquainted with this. I'm going to install some apps and see what I can do here. All right, so right off the bat, uh, Google Play is not installed. I've tried several different methods to install it. When I first clicked on it, it said install Google Play, but I don't know which version to install. I tried a few, and I can't find any information online, so I sideloaded Aptoid. That way I could get some more apps on here. And unfortunately, it's not allowing me to download anything that's bigger than 500 megabytes. I have room left on the eMMC. Um, I just can't install any big games for some reason. I have seen this issue in Aptoid before, but usually it works out fine. I don't necessarily think it's the hardware preventing me. It's got to be something with Aptoid right now, but I was able to install a few things to test out. 
The first benchmark I ran was Geekbench for the single core 697, multi core 1688. Not great, but good for the price point we paid for this thing. The next benchmark I ran was 3D Mark for Ice Storm Extreme. We scored a 4,374. For Slingshot, we scored a 105. Now, just taking a look at the list of results here, I'm going to go to regular Slingshot. These are very expensive phones, but we are way, way, way down the list. We scored a 105. I wasn't able to get Antutu to run. It would just start up and go to a black screen, so I couldn't run that benchmark. I'll move on to some Wi-Fi speed tests, and that's not looking real good either. I'm actually about 15 feet from my router right now. I'm on AC Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz. My home internet is 400 down, 30 up, and if I test my iPhone right beside where the Orange Pi 3 is, I'm getting around 190 down and 30 up. This is the fourth time I've tested it, uh, 46.2 down and about 21 up. I went ahead and shut the unit down and I used another app to test and we got 66.8 down and 22 up. The next thing I wanted to test was native 4K video playback. Now this is all running from a USB 3.0 drive plugged into a USB 3.0 port on the unit itself. This is the built-in video player. It's a little hidden. You will have to go into the file explorer, choose your video and play it from there. I tried playing these clips in Kodi and it didn't work very well. This is 4K 30 FPS. This is my go-to test. I still personally notice a little bit of choppiness, but this can all be worked out with software down the road. Next up, we're going to test out the 60 FPS version of this. And here's the 60 FPS version. You will notice some choppiness here, but I've tested this on a lot of single board computers, either with Kodi or the built-in video player. And I gotta say, this is working better than I've seen in a long time. And one more clip. This is the Jellyfish clip. This is the 200 megabits per second 4K UHD H264.mkv. The board's actually handling this really well. The last thing I wanted to test real quick was just some PSP emulation. Now this isn't the hardest game to run. I'm on the lowest of the low settings and we can barely break 20 FPS with it. This board will definitely handle NES, SNES, Mega Drive, 32X, PC Engine, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. But if you want to go any higher than that, like PSP, Dreamcast, and N64, it's not going to do a great job. In the end, you got to remember that this is the first Android release, but I don't think we're going to get a super jump in performance. Uh, we might get some better 4K video playback. We might get better Wi-Fi performance, but don't expect to get like a 100% performance increase with the next release. That's just never going to happen. So before I get out of here, I just wanted to give you a little size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the Orange Pi 3. As you can see, the Orange Pi 3 is a bit longer and it's a tad bit wider. Not by much, but it does have a bigger footprint. Now, I plan on making another video on the Orange Pi 3 as soon as a good Linux distro is available. Like I mentioned, hopefully the guys over at ARMB and get a hold of one of these real quick because I know there's a lot more that this board can do. This board does have potential, but we're kind of at the mercy of the software available at this moment. Now, if you ever messed around with the Raspberry Pi when it was first released, it was super buggy, very, very slow, and over time it got better and better. Now, I'm not saying that the Orange Pi 3 is ever going to be as popular as the Raspberry Pi is, but there is a chance we could get some good developers on board with this thing and make some great stuff happen with it. But until then, it's kind of limited. Now, the specs on paper look real good. Four USB 3.0 ports, Gigabit Ethernet, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, Quad-Core 1.8 GHz CPU, and we have that mini PCIe adapter. There are lots of projects and tons of ways that this board can be used, but it needs to get in more people's hands, and I think it's a decent price, $399.
high end 40 bucks, low end 30? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button. Maybe think about subscribing to stay up to date with things like this. And like always, thanks for watching.